glorious opportunity this is to look at, see, acknowledge, embrace the divine feminine in each of us. This is such a sacred day. One second. I'm going to just put this a little bit away from my cheek and see if that makes a difference. Does my cheek and the microphone just love each other? And I really want to thank Bruce and Jane for feeding perfectly into my talk today just setting it up exquisitely. We're, we're going to look at how big our bowl is. Those so first let's explore the feminine as principle. Because we hear about the divine feminine, we hear about the, the feminine as part of all being. The feminine is actually principle, just as the masculine is principle. When we explore it from the, the platform of the highest idea, and the feminine as principle is that which can hold, that which can nourish, that which is pregnable, impregnable. That which is a chalice, a tabernacle for not only all that is sacred, but for the activity of creation. And it is the vehicle for that creation to come into manifestation. So the feminine as principle is a big deal. And it is a big deal in terms of how we move something from an idea that we're holding into an experience. Because the feminine as principle is the vehicle for that. Now we may not have thought about that feminine aspect of ourselves, but all of us have it. All of us have it, whether we acknowledge it or not, whether we embrace it or not, whether we realize that that is what is serving us in these very important ways. And regardless of our gender, this sacred feminine is part of our divine essence. Now, there are enormous... Now, y'all have heard about courting, right? You know what courting is, what it means to court something. Don't you? Okay. So, so what I am inviting us all to consider today is courting the feminine. Courting this principle very intentionally. It has the capacity to take what we are praying for, dreaming about, talking to our friends about, talking to ourselves about, what is cooking in us as potential in our lives, as the way we would love life to be, it has the capacity to take those seeds, hold those seeds, nurture those seeds, and bring them to fruition with our cooperation. There is always a catch. And our cooperation is the catch. <clears throat> so, we court this quiet power. We court this wisdom. And something amazing can happen. We have, so we have these ideas about how we would like our life to be. 
Anybody have ideas about how they'd like their life to be other than how it is? Oh, good. I'm in good company. <clears throat> so we have these ideas about how we would like our life to be. And what's interesting about that is that by their definition, our ideas are limited. Because what we are imagining from that place that we are imagining from is informed by what we already know. Let me say that again. What we are imagining from, what we are envisioning from, is informed by what we already know. And what we already know is limited by our experience. By engaging the feminine principle in this very intentional way, we are saying, okay, so here are my ideas. What else? What else might there be? What other ways and means might there be? What, have, what other avenues might there be? You know, have, have you all heard the expression, we pray for this or better? Have you all heard that? Well, she's the or better part because she is where the bewildering hows reside. Hows get us into a lot of trouble. Maybe not trouble, but for sure they slow things down. Because once we're in the hows, then we're trying to figure it out, or control it, or both. And again, where we're looking from is based on what we know. So whatever control, whatever we can concoct, whatever we can conceive is really this big. As Bruce asks, what part of trust me don't you understand? Oh, and the lights just went. That's right. <laughs> what part of trust me don't you understand? You have the seed. I'm the soil. Give it to me. And the fruition of that seed will be made manifest. That's how it works. That's how the entire universe is set up. We tend to come with a small bowl. We tend to come with small ideas. We tend to come with our, our framework about, well, in order for this to happen, then I need to do this, and I need to know them, and I need to go there, and that's the only way that can happen. And that's basically saying to all of creation, it's all right, I got this. I don't need your help. I don't, I don't need you to move through me. I don't need you to move mountains. I got this. Really? That's not what we mean. That's not the life we imagine living. Because the life we imagine living, I, I am willing to bet without knowing, because I saw many hands go up when I said, does anybody have anything in mind that they would like to have be different or other in their lives? I'd be willing to bet that somewhere in there, is greater freedom. Somewhere in there is peace of mind and heart. Somewhere in there is, is the openness and, and the actual experience of life as flow. Yes? But we've got this. No, no, 
because if we had it, we would have it. We would already be in it. So the house, these speed bumps that, that we set up for ourselves, I see you. <laughs> these speed bumps that we set up for ourselves, we're, if we were instead to invite the feminine, to invite the feminine principle to have its way with us, and to have its way with our dreams, then our preconceived ideas, our, our arguments for um, less than an optimal outcome. Nobody in this room ever does that, I know. Because, of course, there's going to be less than an optimal outcome because this is either the only way this can happen or it's the only outcome that's possible. Because of course, what we have in mind, you know, I already said, we're saying to the, to the whole universe, it's okay, I've got this. What we have in mind is, is coming from what we know, is coming from this, this narrow avenue when all of this is available. Now, me, I want all of this working on the fruition of my desires. So how do I access that? And not only how do I access that, but how do I make my life, make myself, make my mind a place of welcome for this life that I am creating. So let's say I've totally got the trust thing down and I'm happy to plant the seeds of my desires and turn them over to the divine feminine to nourish and bring forward. Got that. But is my life big enough? Is my bowl big enough? Is my container big enough? Am I big enough for that life? Because if the answer to any one of those questions is no, then what happens, it's like um, pouring four cups of liquid into a one cup container. There's all this spillover, right? Only so much can fit. Now the containers that I, how many people brought containers today? Great. The containers that I asked you to bring, and I will explain more about it as we go along, it has nothing to do with size. The container that I asked you to bring is, is going to go home with you as a reminder. It has nothing to do with size. And in our minds, in our hearts, in our, in our willingness to lean in and feel in and really open to all that's possible, <laughs> to all that's possible, we are making ourselves a place of welcome for the or better. We are making ourselves a place of welcome for our idea, our dream, our seeds to instead of coming up as one plant, to come up as a huge multi-acre garden. And we have to make room for that. Even though we have no idea about how it's going to happen. Letting go of those hows is one of our greatest challenges. Because our, 
our wiring as human beings is to try to figure it out. Now that trying to figure it out business comes in really handy when we're working with mathematics, for instance. It doesn't come in so handy when we are creating from the all and asking for all. Because that linear thinking can only do what it does. And it can only connect those dots in order without allowing for any other outcomes, possibilities, means and ways, which are endless. Were we to feel prepared? I mean, what the heck? To feel prepared to have our breath taken away by a demonstration. Anybody want to have their breath taken away by a demonstration? Wowie zowie, right? I mean, I know I already did the wowie zowie talk, but a wowie zowie life. <clears throat> so why not have our breath taken away by a demonstration? Why not have those windows and doors of our ideas just blown out by how and what and when manifestation can take place by means of us. Why not? Why not create the space in us for that? So has everybody, is everybody in the room familiar with mental equivalence? I'm not convinced. <laughs> really? Okay, so tell me what they are. Tell me what a mental equivalent is, and not you. <laughs> and not you. <laughs> What's a mental equivalent, guys? This isn't an exam. Come on, what do you think it is? And not you. <laughs> Unless I just give up. How about the foundation's recent graduate? What's a mental equivalent? Okay. Well, since when did you turn into such a shy group? Okay, so it's holding in mind and, and feeling the desired outcome without any attachment to how. Okay, great. Anybody have another idea? Did y'all hear that? The demonstration can only match our idea of it, the drum roll please, and the, it can only fill the container we bring to it. So let's say for instance, that just as an example, that we're that we are holding a mental equivalent of, of having, an, now listen carefully, having enough money to pay all our bills in full, to be out of debt and pay all our bills in full. Whew. Does that sound like a reasonable mental equivalent? Okay, say more. 
That's right. That's right. Do you want to survive or do you want to thrive? Do you want the bounty of, of not even having to think about whether or not you have this money to give, whether or not you have this money to share, whether or not you have this money to do something that you would so love to do? Do you want to have surplus or do you want to have enough? I'm not asking you. I am, I'm just saying, listen to the difference. Because it's not unusual for us to, for us to think enough is enough. It's not unusual. Are you coming to see me again? Okay. Okay. That's not unusual. It's not bad or wrong. It's not unusual. It's, it's just bringing this idea to what it is that we are inviting into our lives as our changed experience. Now, some of us came to the idea of enough being a great place to be generationally. Don't want too much. This much is enough. Don't, 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 don't. I don't need to go through the litany. You all know what it is. The feminine principle is saying to us, here it is. Take what you want. There will always be more. There is an endless supply. I mean, endless supply isn't just the idea, if we can entertain it for a moment, of endless supply of whatever it is, however it is that we imagine feeling in the experience of that, an endless supply of that is hard for some of us to entertain. And this is what's happening. So, consciously, intentionally making ourselves a place of welcome requires persistence. It requires practice. And that other P word. You got it. Patience. Absolutely. We didn't get to these ideas. We didn't get to this little bowl. We didn't get to what we thought we could have or what we're willing to settle for overnight. And having patience with ourselves in the process as we're trying to reach out and move our arms and elbows out and, and spread out and explore what it would mean to have the bigger vision and version, whatever it is, everybody has their own. And then what would it mean for the bigger vision and version? And how would that feel? Because what we learn in this philosophy in particular is how important the feeling is. The feeling is actually more important than the idea. Because the feeling is what puts gas in the car. The feeling is, is what moves things forward. The feeling is like adding amendment. So we talked about the feminine principle, our, the seeds of our ideas, planting the seeds in her soil the feeling is amending that soil. It doesn't need any help from us, but we do. It doesn't need any help from us, but we do. Because we are the ones who believe, 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 and then doubt. 
believe, 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 and then, mm, it hasn't happened yet. Maybe I should, maybe I should choose something smaller. Maybe I should be happy with less. We do that whole number on ourselves without any help. Well, sometimes we have help. <clears throat> so making ourselves a place of welcome requires a fearless opening. An unconditional receptivity. It requires a willingness to entertain. I love, I had to go back and read this a few times after I wrote it because I thought that just feels fabulous. It requires a willingness to entertain what feels absurd, preposterous, and unimaginable. Because as long as it falls into the, the lines, as long as it's coloring between the lines of what we imagine as possible, we're doing this. And I know we don't mean to. We don't think that's what we're doing. And our doubts and our fears betray us. Every time. I, I love the quote from Alice in Wonderland. Do you all know it? When Alice says to the queen, well, that's preposterous. And the queen says, well, I believed six preposterous things before breakfast today. Where is our willingness to at least entertain the preposterous? That's part of being a place of welcome. Osho says, there is an ancient saying in India that you can remain thirsty standing on the bank of a river. Unless you learn how to bow down, fill your hands with water, the river is not going to jump towards you. Unless we engage in this creative process, unless we make ourselves a place of welcome, unless we are, are willing to at least experiment with releasing those seeds to the greater idea of what they can become, we're still waiting for the ri river to jump first. It's like a show me faith, right? Well, show me a little something, show me a sign, show me, just give me a little something and then I'll believe. Uh-uh. That's, that's like this. That's not even a bowl. That's like putting a lid on your cup and saying, go ahead, fill it. I want to watch. Really? Rollo May wrote, receptivity requires a nimbleness, a fine honed sensitivity in order to let oneself be the vehicle of whatever vision demonstration, manifestation may emerge. So, so that is saying, you know, I'm here to go with it. I have my idea about what it is that would enhance and expand my life. And I'm willing to lean into the greater idea and trust that I will be guided, guarded, protected, inspired every step of the way. So back to our containers that everybody brought this morning. <clears throat> I'm going to invite you to line up and come to the stage one by one with your containers and bring it open. You bring the lid too, but bring the container open. <clears throat> This open container is a symbol of your receptivity. The physical size is irrelevant since the capacity to receive is internal and therefore unlimited. By presenting your container here on this stage, 
<clears throat> you are indicating your willingness to receive as well as, as well as your willingness to intentionally become a place of welcome for life as you would have it. Wherever this container is in your home, once you take it home today after the service, it will act as a reminder of your commitment to yourself. And all of us present today are holding in consciousness that commitment with you. If you would please come and place your containers. Mm -hmm. Ernest Holmes reminds us, spirit is ever ready, ever waiting, because its nature is to incarnate. The greater our receptivity and comprehension, the more complete its flow. Such an understanding teaches us that there can never come a time when we shall stop progressing. Do you have a tissue somewhere? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Sorry, everybody. There can never come a time when we shall stop progressing. That age is an illusion. That limitation is a mistake. That unhappiness is ignorance. We cannot be afraid when we know the truth. The greatest good accompanying such an understanding of truth will be the elimination of fear. Courting the divine feminine and learning by her example to welcome and nourish that which is expansive and life enhancing is not something we learn intellectually and then we're done. Remember what I said about the feeling, the importance of our feeling nature. It is something we incorporate, we absorb so completely that there is no place or way to delineate our idea of self from that of true self. In this endlessly fertile atmosphere, we plant our seed. And the next, and the next, and the next. For there is no limitation, not only to what we can experience, what we can receive, what we can enjoy, there is no limit to what we can invite. 
by tending our plant plantings with the fullness and the richness and the yumminess. Because if our feelings about it aren't yummy, believe me, we are planting something that we don't really believe in. We're planting something because we think we should. Cut it out. Plant what makes you feel yummy, what lights you up when you think about it, when you think about living that life. What if you were to walk out the door right now and be living that life today? Now don't go to the preposterous and the impossible without being willing to go there. Preposterous and impossible, right? But maybe not. Are you ready? Are you ready to step into that life fully, completely, without hesitation? Trusting absolutely that all that is required for that life to be experienced by you is your participation, your cooperation, your yes. As we imagine the desired outcome or better, the divine feminine yes cannot do less than respond by corresponding. And there's no condition on that. You don't have to say yes when the moon is in a certain phase. You don't have to be doing it right. There's no wrong way to say yes to your good. Although there are limited ways to say yes to your good. I close with these words from Ernest Holmes. We can increase our receptivity through definitely saying and feeling the truth that there is that in me which knows, understands, accepts, believes, recognizes, and embodies. I know, and I know that I know. Say that with me. I know, and I know that I know. I believe and am conscious that I believe. I am confident of the power of my own word. I have implicit reliance upon the truth, and I expect the truth to operate. This truth that I know is made manifest in my experience now. And so it is. Thank you.